I think I just got it. What do you mean, Kendrick? I'm about to explain it to you, I hope, uh, in a concise and effective way. I've been a history buff for many years, many, many, many years. And when I look back, uh, and I'm going to try and leave my politics out of it, and I'm going to try and just take a very nonpartisan approach to the subject matter. When I look back and I see where states really started to lose their sovereignty, uh, ladies and gentlemen, let's understand that state sovereignty is important to the function of our country. I think it's very funny how our, our, our subsections within this country are called states. If you look at other countries of the world, they call countries states. You have the state of Israel. You have states and you also have nations. States are uh, areas that have defined borders and nations can be multi-state. They can be within different states, different uh, countries, however you want to, to name it. And it makes me think that the founders, what they really wanted, and these people were geniuses. They, they had problems. Some of them were immoral. And some of them, they did unethical, immoral things. Uh, nonetheless, they were very smart people. Uh, they, We are sitting in what they've created or what they started and what has been sustained over a period of 240 plus years. But where I really, and I, I, it, it makes me think that perhaps they wanted each state to function as a separate country. It makes me think that it was almost as if the United States of America was supposed to be like the EU in, in, a, in a way, if you get my, my drift. It was like a collection, the EU is a collection of countries that come together for the benefit of the greater good. But at the end of the day, the functions of one state, one country within the EU, have very little direct effect on another one. So what am I trying to say? As a South Carolinian, I don't have to agree with what Oregonders want, or what Nebraskans want, or what Kansans want, or what Californians want, or what New Yorkers want, because those are separate, or even Georgians, and that's, that's right on our border, formerly a part of Carolina, North Carolina, South Carolina, and Georgia were at one point one state. We don't have to get along, and we don't have to agree. And that's the beauty of this country. And when I look back and I, where I see that that sovereignty, which is so essential to the function of this country, because you cannot get 330 million people to agree on much of anything. Or in the case of our federal government, we have roughly 535 members of Congress, uh, the president and the nine uh, justices on the Supreme Court, 545 people you can't get them to agree on much of anything for whatever reason, whether it be because they're scared to peeve off the people back home or whether they, they legitimately just don't believe in what everyone else believes in. You can't get everyone to agree on it. So what's important is that the federal government function and they tackle the big, important issues that affect all of us. And states can handle things that are more important to that locality, that local area. If, um, again, I'm trying to leave my politics out of it, but let's just be fair here. I've noticed now that I live in a city, a medium-sized city, things are more expensive in cities. Okay, why does the entire country need a $15 minimum wage if the cost of living is higher in a city? Why don't we just make minimum wage higher in cities? I noticed there aren't a lot of mom and pop shops in cities, but mom and pop shops are essential to the function of our country. And a lot of people who want higher minimum wage, I think a lot of them are trying to get back at corporations. And the only thing that's keeping corporations from taking over everything are mom and pop shops. So if we were to uh, increase the minimum wage, for instance, to $15 an hour, most mom and pop shops cannot afford to do that. They're either going to have to close up business or they're going to have to cut their staff. 
one or the other just to make ends meet. And we don't want that. No one wants that. And if you do want that, put yourself in that position where you're one of the workers that loses their job or where whether a business that has gone on for three and four generations and now it's been entrusted to you. And now because of things completely beyond your control, you have to close up shop. Why? Because somebody 3,000 miles away wanted this and you didn't. We have to learn as a country, as a people, as a body of believers, and not just, this isn't really even a, a spiritual issue. This is just a human issue. We need to learn how to function with people who we don't necessarily agree with. You're not being tolerant if you only get along with people that agree with what you say or what you want or what you like. We have to learn how to get along and realize some things could be way better, way better. But at the same time, we've come a mighty long way. So I just want to leave you with that. I think I've, I've figured it out. And what I figured out is when we look back at the history of this country where we really, where states really started to lose that sovereignty has been on the issue of civil rights. When I look back and I see that the two major points where it's happened, the 1860s, uh, I'd say 1865 to like 1877, and then it was kind of re regained between like 1877 to like 1954. And that era was the Jim Crow era. And then as the civil rights movement moved in, states have started to lose their sovereignty again. So for my people out there who are on the, I don't want to say on the other side of the issue, but who don't necessarily agree with everything that's going on right now, sometimes you have to realize, okay, you have to give a little bit to keep what's really important. Now, I'm sorry, but when you look at all the statistics and when you look at, no, I'm not sorry, actually, I'm lying. When you look at statistics, when you look at the entirety of statistics, not just, you know, four or five that your local news station put up, but when you look at the entirety of statistics, you have to admit something's wrong. Yes, more white people were shot by police every year, but when you look at how many white people were shot by the police every year compared to how many black people were shot, when black people are 13% of the United States population and whites are about 62% of the United States population. Literally for every one black person you see, there are five white people. We are two and a half times more likely to be shot by police. And it's not just that. When we look at the effects of slavery, when we look at fatherlessness in, in homes, in black homes today, that is a, uh, everything, I could, let me just put it like this, if I'm just being totally honest and frank. Pretty much every problem you, that you see in the black community today is stemming from either slavery or Jim Crow. Every single one. Every single one. Big one for me because I had such a great father, fatherlessness in homes. That is the direct effect of slavery. When you sit here and you think about the idea, I'm just, this is gonna be a long video and I'm sorry if you have other things to do, but this is important. When you sit here and you look and you just put yourself in this situation, I was thinking about this yesterday. Think about if you had a family and you had a marriage that wasn't even recognized by the government. You went before God or you went before a priest and God and witnesses family, friends, and you had made this covenant with God Almighty and it was not recognized by your government. And without any say, and you let's say you had children, at any say, someone could come along and buy your child, take that child away. You don't get any argument. There is no discussion. As a matter of fact, you will get hurt if you do argue and the money maybe the one benefit in this situation is not even yours you don't even get to, you don't get it you don't even get to see it when your husband can be sold and sent a couple hundred miles away 
and now you have to raise your children on your own. That messes with your mind and we do what we've, what we've seen and what we've been taught. So when you sit here and you see today fatherlessness in especially predominantly in black families, but it's starting to spread to other communities as well. Trust and believe that it is a direct effect of what happened just 150 years ago. It really hasn't been that long ago. It really hasn't. We pass down traditions all the time. We pass down things all the time. Some of us have recipes that go back to the, the 19th century. Some of us have attitudes. Uh-oh. <laughs> things that have been passed down. Stubbornness is a trait passed down. I, I can own that for my own family. I come from a family of stubborn people. And somebody just has to come along and say, I will not tolerate this ignorance anymore. I will not do what mommy and daddy did because it's comfortable or because it's, it's convenient or because it's what I know. I will do something better. I will reach a higher plane. I will do something different because I'm called to be better, to be different, to go higher, to increase. Every problem you see, all of it, has something go, either goes back to, and I don't think, as I, I've said this before, I don't think we deal with a lot of systemic racism today. I think what we're dealing with is the effects of said systemic racism. And I have one more thing to say, and then I'm going to try and close this. A lot of us have mortgages, not all of us. I don't have a mortgage, thank God. But some of us have mortgages. And I know a lot of mortgages, 30 years, fixed rate, that type of thing. And if you miss a payment, and then the next month you make a payment, when you get in that third month, when you get a bill, you're still going to owe for the month that you missed. When I look at this, and I, I, I know this is going to piss some people off, and, and so be it, so what? When you look over the course of American history, there have been things that have been done to make things equal for black people. When you look at the 13th Amendment, freed slaves, the 14th Amendment, provided equal protection under the law, the 15th Amendment, uh, gave black men the right to vote. These are all things that are important, but these are all rights that were given to us by God. We have been human beings for a, a since the dawn of creation. Therefore, a human being, the oldest human remains in this in in the world, come from Africa. Dark skin, light skin, we're all children of God, whether we acknowledge it or not. My question for you is, what has been done to right the wrongs that have been done in the past? Affirmative action, a lot of us would agree, and I agree as well. Affirmative action, depending on how you define it, I think has been a failure. It depends. I've heard multiple definitions. Some people say it's uh, creating systems that uh, try and create equity for black people. And then some people say affirmative action is promoting people of color just because they're people of color and a lot of people object to that type but it depends again again how you define it but nonetheless I want to know I'd love for you to inbox me because I, I you can message me or you can put it in the comments or whatever the case may be if you'd like to put it down there but I know in this this turbulent time someone's not gonna like it someone's gonna get pissed off you may not want people to know what you're thinking that's fine I want to know it'll be just between you and me but I'm trying to figure out what has been done. I think America is a great country. It is the greatest country on the face of the earth, but we have some problems. And if we don't start to address teeny problems, teeny problems become big problems. And when they become big problems, they become out of control and there's nothing that we'll be able to do about it. Just like going back real quick to the state sovereignty thing, because states refused to acknowledge and treat blacks equally the federal government felt they had cause to step in and right this wrong and while 
they were doing that, they decided to fix a whole bunch of things. And quite frankly speaking, I don't think they've ever stepped back. So you make the decision for you in your mind, in your heart right now. Am I willing to lose all of America because I refuse to understand or because I refuse to look at the whole picture? Because I refuse to face all the facts. Not just the facts that I like, but all the facts. Until next time, ladies and gents.